Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> it's another beautiful Tuesday. The last Tuesday in the month of September. The 27th day. Welcome to What Break Out This Life. <clears throat> Excuse me. God bless you. As you join, please like and share. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the entrance of your word. As it gives life and understanding. Open our heart, open our ears, open our eyes to receive your word. And to mix it with faith in our hearing so it will profit us something. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit our ways to you this morning. And we ask that you direct and order our paths by you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, please as you join, like and share. Invite others to be part of this broadcast. Amen. Glory to God. We are looking at the last part of our topic today. The anointing. Glory to God. The anointing. So we are looking at part four today. <coughs> Acts chapter one, verse eight. <coughs> Excuse me. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Glory to God. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And um, last, week, last week, I, I was saying something. I said, the anointing is an intimate experience. Praise God. A lot of us know the anointing to be divine enablement. We know the anointing to be empowerment God's empowerment the anointing is also an intimate experience that makes God seem close to the anointed like he has never before experienced praise God and um, I did say last week the anointing is an overwhelming um realization of God's nearness that feels like you can almost touch him uh, and reach him glory to God hallelujah the anointing is experiencing the warmth of God's love his glory and the comfort of his peace that's what the anointing is. It's not just a drop of oil. Certain things are symbols, but not the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I did say last week, the anointing itself cannot be seen. But the power, its manifestations, and its effects can be seen why because it is tangible glory to god the anointing is what brings god's presence and i said it increases in volume in volume where it is valued glory to god the anointing increases in volume where it is valued the anointing is the wonderful experience of the presence of God that causes men to wonder. Hallelujah. It is the supernatural power of God on display. 
ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It's not coming upon you to be arrogant. It's coming upon you to become an effective witness. Glory to Jesus. So the anointing that is not used properly becomes an annoying thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> and I remember this saying, did, I did say last week that the presence of God carries God's voice while his gifts carries ours. The gift of God carries our voice, his presence carries God's voice. Amen. All right, quickly, um, we look at um, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Luke 24, 49. Don't forget, we are still looking at the anointing. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Glory to God. Until ye be endued with power from on high. The anointing is the supernatural power of God on display. So tarry here until power comes upon your life. You are endued with power from on high. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acts 22, Acts 22, <clears throat> 2 to Acts, verse number 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the light. And we are afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Hallelujah. Paul was under the power. Remember the story? He was on a mission of destroying God's people to Damascus, and he had an encounter. With the power of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God knocked him down. And um, people were with him. They saw what he saw, but they didn't hear what he heard. Praise God. Anointing makes the difference. Is somebody hearing me today? Anointing makes the difference. Amen. Paul was under the power and heard God's voice because the Lord was present. Where the Lord is present, His voice will be heard. Praise God. He heard God's voice because God was present. And he produced virtue. The voice he heard from God make him become effective in his work with God. I'll be showing you some things as we proceed. Glory to God. The tremendous power of the Holy Spirit was manifested right from the beginning. According to Genesis 1 verse 2. Let's look at Genesis 1 verse 2. The power of God here is talking about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Praise God. As I said, the tremendous power of the Holy Spirit was manifested right from the beginning. Genesis 1 verse 2. He said, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. His tremendous power was seen, manifested, according to the scripture we just, we just read. And don't forget, I said the anointing is, is the supernatural power of God on display. Saul encountered it, it knocked him down. Transformed him from a killer to become a pillar. There are a lot of us look up to today. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The anointing is not about eloquence of speech, but about adequacy of spirit. Amen. It's not, it's not about what? Eloquence of speech. It's about adequacy of spirit. The anointing is not in grammar, it's in power. Glory to God. It's in power. Somebody just stand still and the anointing is exuding out of them. Some may jump and shout and scream. Some will just be quiet. The difference is in understanding the anointing, how he deals with you or deals with an individual. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, so it's not about eloquence of speech, but adequacy of spirit. And um, the anointing is a must. If you want to be used by God, or if you wish to be used by God, it is a must that you need the anointing. Praise God. If you are not operating in the anointing, you will certainly be operating in the annoying things. And instead of bringing people together, you will be scattering them. We are not called to be hirelings. Glory to Jesus. So you need the anointing. The reason certain things are not happening in your ministry is because there is no anointing. No two ways about it. The anointing is not grammar. Praise God. <laughs> All right, let's proceed. No matter your, your position, ministerially, um, all of us need the anointing to fulfill the rules God has for us. Every one of us need the anointing to fulfill the roles, certain roles that God has for us to fulfill by the reason of the anointing. Hallelujah. Whatever he has called us to do, we need the anointing to fulfill such roles. The anointing, take note of what I'm saying now. <laughs> Amen. The anointing carries a heavier responsibility than the presence of God. Hmm? Somebody said, what did you say? 
I said the anointing carries a heavier responsibility than the presence of God by itself. But we, you and I, cannot do without the presence of God. His presence. Let me explain something now. His presence, the presence of God, makes you to walk with God. The presence of God makes you to love God. The, the presence of God makes you to have fellowship with Him. On a regular basis. Without necessarily being in the ministry. That's why I said the anointing is heavier. Glory to Jesus. His presence make you walk with him. His presence make you love him. His presence make you have regular fellowship with him without necessarily being in the ministry. But if you are in the ministry, you need the power, which is the anointing, to fight devils. You need the power to fight sickness. You need the power to fight the powers of hell, which is the anointing. You need it, my brother. You need it, my sister. You need the anointing. Divine enablement. God's empowerment. To do what an ordinary individual cannot do. It is what makes the difference, my friend. The anointing. The anointing. It's not in shouting. He's not been jumping up and down. He's not in eloquence, like I said. Glory to Jesus. If you're a minister of the gospel, the anointing is mandatory. You need it. It is a must-have. You need the anointing. No matter what your ministerial calling is, you need the power of the anointing to fulfill it. Praise God. You need it. You know why? You will never accomplish what God wants you to do without the anointing. So you need the anointing, my friend. You need the anointing, my brother. You need the anointing, my sister. I'm trying to round up now, but it's important. You need the anointing. Glory to Jesus. Your oratory, your oratory ability, as an orator, or oration might be impressive but anointing makes the difference as i keep emphasizing about grammar anointing makes the difference without the anointing there will be no growth Without the anointing, there will be no blessing. Without the anointing, there will be no victory in your ministry. That is why we say the supernatural power of God on display. You need the anointing to make progress in your ministry. 
You need the anointing to be the difference. You need the anointing to fulfill your purpose. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God upon your life to be whatever and whomever God has designed and destined you to be. Glory to Jesus. Shall we pray? Just pray with me. Say, Lord, let your precious anointing come past me as with a shield in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and talk to God right now. Lord, let your, your precious anointing come past me as with a shield. In the name of Jesus, to become an effective witness to you, for you, and with you, let your precious anointing come past me right now, right away. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' precious name, we prayed. Amen. If you are not born again, whatever I've shared will sound like a fairy tale to you. But if you want to be, you want to partake of this experience, then you can pray with me briefly, shall we? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for causing me to hear your word this moment. Lord, the effect of your word is making impact in my life. And I, in turn, surrender my totality to you right now. I confess your lordship over my life. I ask for your mercy in any way I've erred, in words, thoughts, and deeds. I acknowledge you as my Lord and personal Savior. Take over me and be the master of my life as I accept you today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you have done that, congratulations. God bless you. Welcome to God's family. Amen. Welcome to God's family. Go to any Bible believing church close to you. Tell them you just received God's word and you are willing to be part of the service. Amen. Don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel at Diet Missions. See you same time next week, which is a brand new month. It promises to be a very, very interesting moment again. David Van Joseph is my name, and I remain your host, the visionary leader of Diet Mission and a freelance itinerant revivalist. See you around same time next week. God bless you. Thank you for staying tuned. Have a great day.